this is one of the prettier sights I've seen. I'm glad you like it. It's uh, You're in our elk and bison prairie here on land between the lakes. And uh, we've got a 650 acre enclosure here that was developed back in 1996. They uh, put this uh, fence up and they brought some elk and bison in as the name might imply. Why elk and bison? Well, you think of those uh, animals today, you think, oh, they're a Western species. Right. But historically, there was a whole bunch of those things out here. You know, some of the interstates, like Interstate 24 that runs up here, were, were actually originally trails made by huge herds of bison as they migrated as far east as the coast, uh, all the way down as far as Florida. Hmm. And they didn't hook up too well when the settlers came in and found out how huntable and tasty they were. And they uh, whittled down their numbers over time. And by the early to mid 1800s, they were all pretty much wiped out. Are the elk and bison reproducing? I mean, are they yeah. are they thriving? Yeah, they're thriving as much as we can allow them within a fenced area. When we have excess elk, we try to make them available. So we've given a lot of elk to you know Tennessee. The last bunch went to West Virginia hmm. um, to help start some of their populations. Bringing the native sons and daughters back yes, home. Yes, yes. So it's neat to be able to contribute to that. And then those elk are roaming free out in. Uh, the hills and dales of uh, eastern U.S. So, you know, we just pulled through the gate. What am I going to experience? You've got a three and a half mile loop road that you can drive, and you can drive it as many times as you want once you've come in, and they're free roaming within the, the area. So you're driving among the animals, and they kind of come and go. They've got room to get away from the visitors if they're trailing camera shot that day. Sometimes timing is a bit of it. You may see only elk or only bison. Uh, occasionally you won't see either one, uh, but it's best if you think about how the animals are feeling at the time. So if it's the middle of summer, stick to the early, early morning, late, late evening. They don't want to be out baking in the sun either. They're used to seeing people, but they're not comfortable with them. You know, you can't feed them. They don't come up to the cars and try to beg for food. It's not that kind of thing. Right. And we try to make sure it isn't. What that allows is these animals do survive fine out in the wild once we let them go from here. They're used to eating food that grow here in the eastern U.S. right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so when we let them go, they know how to get by on their own and get through a winter on their own, you know, without having to go in a barn and eat a pile of hay. One of the things we're trying to do is maintain this habitat. Right. The openings are what really attract the bison. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the elk like a little bit of both. They like the openings and the and the open forests with the browse, they're kind of like deer. They like to eat buds of seedling trees and, and things like that. But uh, it's not just for elk and bison. It uh, helps benefit a, a wide variety of these mixed forest species. A lot of birds and, and rodents and all the things that feed on those. You'll see bald eagles out here and all types of hawks. And you have your own circle of there, life going on There's a whole thing here. going on out here. And <laughs> right. Of course, you know, the elk and well, bison is the selling point on, right. on the sign, but it really benefits those a lot more than just that. Go right. out. Yeah. Right. So what's to be learned? in these 650 acres. We're trying to remind the public this stuff used to be here. Right. And at the same time, show them the benefits of doing this. Maybe they own a farm. They say, boy, that is pretty neat. I didn't know that if I let my grass grow in this field, I'd have all this extra wildlife. I'd mm -hmm. mow it every year. People have gotten in the habit of mowing, mm -hmm. so it looks like a big uh, park or, or lawn. And, and there's actually benefits to having things rough around the edges. Absolutely. And that just, you know, that's, that's a good thing. What can people do to help? Uh, support what you guys do here. Visit the facilities and help spread the word and you know it's not really supported by tax income so they actually pay a per vehicle fee when they enter okay and uh, that helps us keep the gates open mm. uh, to well, that I, what we can. It's kind of a bucket list thing um, I've been lucky enough to see an elk but I mean just in one instance in my entire life have I seen an elk up close and actually um, heard a bugle and all that I mean that really is a, a unique thing. That is cool right there. The USDA Forest Service works with groups like the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, TVA, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and more, as it certainly takes a village to preserve and protect these beautiful creatures. You're getting some flowers in your hair, buddy. He's being a pollinator right now. <laughs>